Okay, before we move on, I want to say one last thing about shapes. Because once a shape or vector art has been created, it can be edited as a layer in any way we've learned so far this semester. Some ways we've learned include adjustment layers, layer masks, layer blending modes, layer effects and styles, etc. The examples below here show a generic custom shape. It starts out as a solid color. The layer blending mode was then adjusted. In the last example, we've applied some layer effects to make it look like the fire is glowing. What's important about these edits is that they are all done using non-destructive editing. The vector art in Photoshop does not need to be rasterized in order to be modified in these ways, meaning it remains fully editable as anchor points and directional lines. The pen and freeform pen tools can be used to create personalized shapes. The freeform pen tool is used just like the lasso tool. Click and drag continuously to create a freeform drawing. The example on the right side of the slide shows a path created using the freeform pen tool. We simply clicked and dragged in a wavy pattern until we returned to the original starting point. When the mouse was released, the path was complete. The pen tool is more difficult to use. Every time the mouse is clicked, a new anchor point is inserted. If the mouse is clicked and dragged, a new anchor point is added by the click, and directional lines, or handlebars, are pulled out to add a curve with the drag. It is good form to always close your paths. You can do this by returning to the beginning of your path and clicking the first anchor point, or hover over it if you're using the freeform pen tool like we did in this example. The example on this slide shows a drawing we made using the freeform pen tool. Once we are done and release the mouse, mouse, a path was created with many black anchor points. We now have the option to load this as a selection, a path as you can currently see it, or a shape. The regular pen tool is ultimately more beneficial than the freeform pen tool because it allows for more control and precision. However, it is harder for newer Photoshop users to use. So, by click click clicking, this creates shapes with angular anchor points, no curve, like in this first example. We click click clicked all the way around the path until we return to the starting point, creating a path with angular joints. Clicking and dragging adds anchor points with directional lines, also referred to as handlebars. The longer the directional lines, the deeper the curve. Each anchor point can have two directional lines. One controls the curve to the right of the anchor point. The other controls the curve to the left of the anchor point. Be careful when using this technique to make paths. Click and dragging does two things. The click adds the anchor point. The drag pulls the directional lines out from the anchor point. Dragging does not continue the path. The only thing that continues the path is a new anchor point, which is created by clicking. The examples on this slide show both angular and curved joints, as well as open and closed paths. There will always be a time and a place for open and closed paths, but as a general, general rule, always close your paths. Don't leave them open unless you are doing so for a purposeful reason. So Jessica, could you show us how to use the freeform pen tool in Photoshop? I think that I could do that. So uh, when you are using the freeform and the regular pen tool, it's important to find it. It's about halfway down in your tools panel, and it looks like an old fountain pen, and if you push and hold it, you'll see that there's actually a bunch of options. There's the pen tool, the freeform pen tool, and then if you wanted to modify your paths in addition to these tools, you could add and delete anchor points, and you can convert an anchor point from having handlebars or those directional lines to not having them, or vice versa. If you had an anchor point that didn't have any um, directional lines you could add them by using the convert point tool. We're going to start off with the freeform pen tool because that's by far the easiest tool to use um, when you want to use a pen tool in general. And so once you have the tool selected it works just like the lasso tool would be if you're making a selection but instead of making a selection you're making a path. And so if you wanted to create a custom shape and you wanted it to look like this you could just go around until you get back to the beginning. Notice, I don't know if I can zoom in on this. Let's try. Oh, I can. Um, notice that when you get back to the beginning, a circle will appear to the bottom right hand corner of your freeform pen tool or your pen tool if you're using that one. That represents the close path icon and if, when I deselect, I let go of my mouse, um, it will connect the first anchor point to the very last one and it creates what's called a closed path. And so you could use this to create a custom shape Maybe you wanted it to be smaller and look like this. You could make a big kind of wonky circle. You could even make like a custom heart if you wanted it to look more personal than a stock heart. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, I want to get rid of these working paths. And so I'm just going to make a new layer and uh, I guess I'm not going to get rid of them just yet. So we're going to also show the pen tool. And the pen tool is interesting because it is by far um, it's by far harder to use, but once you get good at the pen tool and you can use the pen tool in Illustrator, InDesign, or Photoshop, it actually is a more powerful tool than any of the other uh, vector art tools in Photoshop because you can customize and you can really tweak your, your pads as you make them. When you're using the freeform pen tool or the pen tool, it's important to make sure that you know what you're creating. And so when I created those freeform pen tools, I forgot to change my, uh, my intent from a path to a shape and that's why they're still on there and we're going to cover paths a little later and so I'm not going to show you the how to get rid of them just yet but once you have the pen tool if you click 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 as I like to say in my videos if you just click you're going to continue the path that you're creating and because I'm creating a shape now as I start to come around in this this circle type pattern you can see it's filling in with the color the same thing applies with closing your path. So this is not a closed path right now. It's a path that starts here and goes all the way around to the last anchor point. If I was to add a stroke to this right now, the stroke would not continue all the way to the end. And so just like we did on the freeform pen tool, you have to come back to the very first anchor point, see that little circle, and then click and it will close your path. And so now that's a continuous path. And if we were to add a stroke to that, Let's make our stroke bigger so you can see it. The stroke would go all the way around the, the path instead of just stopping. When you use the pen tool, if you click and you drag, it will almost appear like nothing's happening because you see these handlebars or these directional lines come out, but you think you're trying to kind of draw a path. And what you're doing is you're adding a curve. In this case, I'm adding a curve, or I'm, I'm saying that the anchor point should have a curve coming to the right and coming coming off to the right and off to the left of that anchor point. But until I make a new anchor point, you can't see what that curve did. So I'm just going to click, and the curve that was created by the right-hand side handlebar creates this curve. And now if I click to make the anchor point and I drag, you can see that it adds two more handlebars coming out of the path. And so the left handlebar is controlling the curve to the left that you can see, and the right-hand handlebar is controlling controlling the curve to the right, which you can't see yet, because you won't see it until I make a new anchor point, let's say up here. And so now, if I wanted to modify that further, I could click and drag, and click and drag, and click and drag, all the way around the shape, until you come back to the original, and then you can modify it however you want to create your shapes. Now, I am not someone who's a master of Illustrator software. When you are a master of Illustrator, as you are creating your paths, you would click, click and drag, and use modifier keys and things like that to create the perfect shape the first time out. What I recommend for my InDesign students, and maybe for the Photoshop students as well, is I would always just click and make angular shapes. And then if you want to, you can always, I didn't close that path. You can always come back and you can modify those anchor points. And so in the next video, we'll show you how to modify anchor points and we'll show you how to make them have curves if they don't have curves or get rid of a curve if you want it to have an angular joint.